Hi, I'm Tomás Kökény, but everybody calls me Toyás. It's egg in Hungarian. Please, please call me Toyás beside my parents. So everybody calls me that. So it's totally fine. Um, who am I and what I'm going to talk about? I'm I'm working as a software developer full time, but also I'm one of the co-founders of a school in Hungary called DreamFox Academy uh, that's teaching uh, actually adults to become programmers. It's a career changer school. So we help people to become developers in a short period of time. And it, we also help them to, um, to get jobs after it. And I also love to teach kids. I, I started this, uh, I wouldn't say that's, that's my profession, but more like my hobby. So I started this with, with school. And, and since that five years ago, when we started, I, I did that a lot of time. I, and I think it's one of the best things. Uh, in this session, I would like to show you uh, Python in, in one hand and on the other hand, uh, this really awesome online editor called Trinket, where you are able to uh, write Python and also right away draw with it and so on. And, and also some libraries that you can use here for drawing and, and creating games and so on. Um, I would say my first question is like, how many of you have experience with Python? So how much should I talk about Python? Okay, anybody else? So few people, I would say <laughs> some. Okay, then, then I will go into the depths of Python as well, not just this platform. Uh, what I would like to do today to uh, together discover this platform and in the other hand, create a small game. Uh, that's something that, for example, you could even bring for kids. Uh, I'm not really sure that we will get into finishing the game in this one and a half hours, but at least you will learn the whole platform and, and all the necessary tools to basically create whatever uh, on the long run that you would like to have. Is there any question before we start? Comment, sarcastic remark, anything? Cool, then let's jump in. So the, uh, Ursh, Ursh yeah. is telling something, but you are not. I Again, know. microphone, I guess. Yeah. Do you hear me now? Yep. Uh, so as before, uh, you said that you help to other people to become a programmer. How yep. much does it take for them? How much yep. time it occurs? Yeah, so with the, we have, quite a few different setups. I would say the short, shortest is uh, four and a half months, but it's, it's full time and, and super intensive. So like we expect people to dedicate at least, I would say 10, 10, 11 hours daily. So yeah, basically they are shitting bricks, but they, then they be, become developers in a really short period of time. Any other question, comment, anything? Then let's jump in. Uh, so the platform that I would like to show you is called twinkat.io. Basically, you, you just type this uh, URL uh, into, into Chrome and, and you will be able to uh, get it right away. Uh, the only thing that you need to register, so, but basically you're able to register with a uh, web address, uh, like, uh, email address and, uh, and a password and also with, uh, with any of the social media or, or Google accounts. So yeah, so you can, you can use that. Right after you entered, uh, you are able to create so-called new trinkets. The trinket is, is one project basically in, uh, in this setup. Uh, they have this freemium model, so you're unable to do all the programming languages that you can see here. Uh, Python means Python 2 in this case, but I think in a level how we are teaching kids, it doesn't really matter if it's type, type, uh, Python 2 or 3. Uh, and all the libraries are going to work with both, so you don't have to um, 
worry that much about it. And it also enables you to do HTML. So in the same platform, you are able to do uh, um, small websites as well. I wouldn't say that's the best tool for it. So for example, for HTML and JavaScript, I would rather uh, recommend CodePen. Uh, I think it's a more streamlined setup for HTML, but I think for, uh, for Python, it's one of the best. So let's create a new trinket in this case. I will click on Python. Um, and it's quite basic setup. You will have the uh, code here. And what's really nice, you will have two different uh, outputs. In one hand, you are able to write uh, to the console. So you're basically able to write, uh, create console applications. But also this uh, plane here is working as a as a drawing uh, canvas as well. So you're able to create graphical games and console uh, applications in the same time. Yeah, um, let's try Python in this case. Uh, the Hello World version in, in Python is there is a function in Python called uh, print. Uh, and as you can see, it also does a uh, syntax highlight. Maybe I zoom in a bit to make sure that everybody is able to see it. Um, and how you define strings in Python, it's quite similar to most of the mainstream programming languages. So between quotes, uh, actually it works with single and double quotes as well. I would say the convention is mostly double quotes in, in Python. So let's say hello world. Let's run this program. With this run button, you can run it right away. Uh, and, and basically if you don't print or like draw anything on the screen, then the whole area here gonna become the console. So what's really nice with this setup and how, why I really like it, because many of the, um, many of the online uh, places where you're able to do Python, or even if you are doing it with, with real uh, tools, like I don't know, VS Code or, or PyCharm or anything like that, it's not that easy to have both the drawing uh, place and the console. And, and if you're teaching the language at the beginning and you just really wanna show variables and numbers and so on in the really beginning, uh, for example, if you don't wanna yet uh, explain how to draw something or anything like that, just, just play with numbers right away, you are still able to do that, but in the same place you're able to do drawing as well. So it's, I think it's a nice mixture of those. Uh, what's really nice with Python from the point of view of teaching uh, that in many of the cases it's simplified and, and the, so like it's really easy to create variables. You don't have to specify the scope of it and the type of the variable and, and so on. It's not a type language, so it's totally dynamic or not a statically typed language, so it's totally dynamic. Uh, and because of that, it's uh, it's really easy to start with it right away and create something that looks good. Uh, on the other hand, uh, what's really nice also for, for Python that it's highly opinionated on indentation. So the indentation is part of the syntax and the language. Uh, and, and why I'm saying that's good, because uh, I think in most of the cases, it's really hard, especially with kids to teach them to follow a certain guideline how to code. And uh, because it's, it's really hard to tell them that, okay, I see that your code is running and it works, but it's ugly and please make it better. And, but it works, why would I? But in this case, it forces them to, to basically create good code uh, or, or well indented code because it wouldn't gonna, it's, uh, it's not even gonna run without it. Uh, so let's try it and let's do something with it. Uh, you're able to create variables right away Let's create some variables. Uh, you don't have to tell the type of the variable or even the scope of the variable. So right away, you, you're just able to create, like uh, creating the name of it, like uh, my favorite numbers. Let's say that's 42. Uh, and you are right away able to print it. Um, as you can see, usually the convention is to use the underscores, 
um, with with functions and and classes usually that's camel case but it's really up to you so it's more like the conventions of the language it's not like it's not going to work if it's anything like that and as you can also see uh, you don't have to use semicolons uh, that's also something that's that's more uh, kid friendly in this case uh, because you don't have to even find that character on the keyboard in one hand and also explain why we are doing this ugly stuff and, and really it's more readable in, in a sense that they already see in mass class or anything like that. Any question, comment, anything like that so far? Awesome. Uh, what are the types in Python and, and, and what are the basic structures that you're able to do? Uh, type on, uh, Python differentiates between the types of the numbers. So uh, we could check it. There is a function in Python called type that would give you back the type of the, um, the variable or, or the expression. Um, of course, that's not something that we would need to use with, uh, with the kids. I just want to show you like how, how you can think about these types. Uh, so it differentiates between uh, integers and floating point numbers. The only difference is in the lit if you are using the uh, dot in the literal. So if in the literal there is a dot, it would think it's a, it's a floating point number. We can check it. In this case, it's going to be a float. Uh, it behaves a bit differently arithmetically if it's an int or if it's a float. It's, it's quite standard to all the other languages. So for example, if you would do um, division with ints, it's still going to be an int. Uh, if you do it with uh, floats, then it's going to be a float and so on. Uh, all the basic arithmetic uh, things are working with uh, or operations are working with numbers. So you can say plus, uh, let's remove this type function there. Plus minus times, let, let's have a more interesting number there than, than just one for multiplication. It would be way better if I could type. <laughs> uh, and, and also division. Uh, yeah, sorry, I, I thought something that, 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 that was a lie. So in Python 3, it, it would be an integer. In Python 2, uh, it's, a, it's a floating point number. I would say that's the only difference in the level of the kids uh, that you will really see uh, as it different in, in the two uh, versions of Python. Unfortunately, Python uh, 2 is still really present. Like, as you can see here, the uh, non-premium version is with Python 2. And also, unfortunately, Python 2 is already discontinued. So uh, the last uh, security update was uh, on end of last year. So since that, it's uncontinued. So it's highly advised to not really do anything with Python 2 anymore. I wouldn't say that hurts with the kids if you create games with them. And it's also not that different from Python 3 in the scope that you are just really basically creating simple functions. Uh, so I wouldn't be that concerned about this one. But if you are really uh, using Python in a real environment, like uh, if you really have access to their computers and you're able to install stuff and you want to do it with Visual Studio Code or anything like that, uh, then I advise you to use Python 3 in that case. Uh, okay, the more uh, fancy uh, arithmetic operators is the double, uh, double star, that's basically power. So in this case, that's 42 on the power of 10. Uh, yeah, I guess it's not something that would come up a lot with kids. I just wanted to show you that uh, that exists. And also the modulo operator is something. Uh, I would say that it's more like something that could come up uh, even with kids. That's the operations with, uh, yeah, with uh, numbers. Let's go to strings and what we're able to do with them. Uh, let's have a new variable 
and let's print it as well. So it's nothing yet. Uh, because of the nature of you can use the double and the single quotes, uh, if you would need a single quote in the text, or if you would need a double quote in the text, you can do it without escaping it. Uh, so uh, I think it's something for kids as well, because to show them the escape character and so on, that's, that's more like uh, scary. So for example, if you teach English kids and you would need to write down don't or something like that, uh, that works well if you are using the, the double quotes. Uh, right away, you can add uh, strings together. That's concatenation uh, in Python. I think it's a really nice feature. The only bad thing with strings that you, can, you cannot right away concatenate numbers. So you would have an error there. For that, you explicitly need to convert that number to string. Uh, that's a usual error that comes comes up with kids. Uh, like I just wanted to add an additional number there or anything like that. So unfortunately, because of that, you need to introduce um, casting for them. In this case, it's always the type. Uh, there is a function with the type name. So in this case, if you say uh, str, uh, that would uh, create a string based on the value that you pass into the, that function. Uh, and it works the other way around. So you can, you can create an integer from a string by calling the int or, or the float number uh, for uh, function. Uh, what else is really nice with Python? Uh, and I, I like to play with this with kids. I think that's, that's something that's fun for them. Uh, if you have a single uh, let's not remove this. Let's let's an, add another example. For example, if we have apple here, let's print it. Uh, the multiply operator. Actually, with any uh, enumerable, enumerable uh, type, it's going to work. But I think it's really fun with, uh, with strings. If you multiply any enumerable with a uh, number, then it will append the same thing that many times together. And, uh, and I think it's a nice way to, to basically create a loop-like uh, thing with, uh, with strings. I use this joke with, with kids, like if you need to write down something many, many times, like the teacher is mad and said that you should write this down a thousand times, then it's really easy to do that with Python because you just multiply it by 10. Uh, the only bad thing with this, if you teach other languages after Python, they are really mad that they are unable to do this. Uh, I, <laughs> I already had this experience with them. Um, yeah, so you can do uh, do this. What's really nice that it works with any other uh, type, so even with lists and anything that you can iterate through. Um, and actually, let's let's get to iteration and and the more complex types. I would say the uh, the next thing that only can come up uh, in this case is the list. Uh, there are other complex types like dictionaries and so on, but I don't think that's uh, that's something that that really useful for, for uh, teaching uh, young kids. The list, how it looks, we can, we can check it. Uh, let's have a numbers variable. Basically just be between the brackets you put stuff. Uh, let's check it. In one hand, it's really nice. So it's, it's something similar to JavaScript uh, that you right away able to print uh, a complex type and it looks good on the screen. So it's not like with Java or with C or if you are uh, teaching some other language that you just get a pointer or, or a hash for the object and it's not something that looks cool already on the, on the screen. So because of that, I think it's not that bad. It's not that hard to introduce even lists uh, for kids. 
and and really show them that okay right away you can check it and you don't hit you don't even have to write a for loop to just check what's inside that uh, list in that case to really show you that this multiplication works with uh, with lists as well uh, and also that's that's quite nice that the concatenation is also working with lists. So really easily you can uh, you can do uh, stuff with it. And, and, and it's something that's always true with Python. It's, it's really verbose and right away you can, you can do really complicated stuff with just with operators. Uh, so I think because of this is really powerful and without introducing really hard uh, concepts, like if you would teach this with Java or C Sharp or anything like that, then you would need to create another array and put everything inside that with a for loop and so on. Uh, so if you have even more complicated stuff uh, with uh, uh, with lists and you have an idea to do something with it, right away you can you can do, uh, uh, for example, concatenation. The accessing operator is the same bracket. So basically, we can have the certain that. What's really nice with Python that the accessing operator is also something that's really smart. Uh, uh, for example, it handles negative numbers. Could you could you guess what's gonna be the minus two in this case? All right, no guess, even on, on the chat. Let's run it then. <laughs> so the mine, oh yeah, four, you were right. So what the minus numbers are doing that basically they are indexing the same thing from the end. So the negative one gonna be uh, five, the negative two is uh, four, negative three, negative uh, uh, five and so on. So four and five and so on. It's still not going to work if you uh, outbound it. So like you cannot say seven here, that's right away an, an exception. Um, so it's not going to be as with JavaScript that you are able to uh, use indexes that are not inbound. The other type that you should know about is the null type of, of Python. Uh, because it can come up if, if something doesn't work. Uh, in Python, we call it, uh, let's check it. We call it none. So yeah, it's not gonna work because we have an exception here. So that's the, that's the null type, basic that that means that that's the also the void. So uh, if something doesn't returns or if some variable is not yet set or anything like that, then that's gonna be that. Because we don't have a keyword for creating the variables, uh, all the variables are, are function scoped and you cannot create variables without assigning values to them. So there are no such thing as difference between declaring variables and uh, de defining variables. I think it's also something that helps with the kids that you don't have to show these concepts to even have empty variables because you're only able to create them if you assign values to them as well. Any questions regarding types or anything so far? Then the last two types that I, uh, I would like to show you is the Boolean, uh, or it's one type, but <laughs> two values. Uh, in the case of uh, Python, it's uh, starting with capital letters. So if you just write true like that, that's gonna be an error. Uh, so you have to use capital true or capital false. 
And also what's really nice in my opinion with, uh, with the operators, the, uh, the Boolean operators with Python that they are spelled out and not, not the end and the pipe character. So for example, if you would like to have uh, an or, then you literally say true or false. And, and it's also something that I think it's more easy to uh, teach for the kids. And also it's not just like easy, but also you don't have to search for that end character and pipe character and so on. So this is the or, and this is the end. Um, and, and actually the negation is not. So in this case, that gonna evaluate to true. Uh, to, to true. Uh, one of the ideas with Python was that it, in many of the cases, it should really read like English. So basically you were just really writing down this sentence that true and not false with evaluate to true. Okay, then let's jump into the control structures. Uh, so the next step is to show you the really simple control structures. The first one would be the if uh, in this case. Uh, let's check that and how, how is it working in Python. Let's create a new variable for that. And let's say that's four. And then uh, it's if, what's really nice or I don't know if that it's that nice, but you don't have to use the uh, parentheses here. So right away, the if you are able to uh, tell your condition. So in this case, we can check if A is, I don't know, bigger than three. Uh, you are finishing the if statement or any statement if it's a control structure uh, and a block is coming after it. So if it's a function signature, a for loop, an if, a while or anything like that, you always finish it with a column. So the column tells that the next thing up it is gonna be a block. Uh, we don't have the curlies as in C sharp or Java or C++ or anything like that, or even JavaScript, uh, but rather after the column, uh, because it's a really a smart editor, it's already doing the indentation for you. Uh, actually in this case, the indentation tells that's a block. So in Python, you must do the indentation. Let's check this. So in this case, I'm gonna print uh, it's bigger than, than that's that then, uh, bigger than three. No, yes. Let's run it. So it, it worked. And if you do it without the indentation, you right away get an error. Uh, so it's a syntax error if you don't indent it. Uh, actually in the spec, so how you're able to do Python in one, uh, you can use either spaces, either tabs, uh, and uh, it's valid to do two spaces or four spaces. So both, both gonna work, but you have to stick with one in one file. Uh, this editor right away uses two spaces. Uh, so in this case, I would say, don't change that. And, and use the two spaces, but you can see in other environments that they are using uh, three spaces. Uh, and how you're getting out of block, basically, if you remove the indentation, then it's not gonna consider this is still in the block. So in this case, if I say print after, let's check it. And if I change this, then the after is still running there. So basically with the indentation, you can tell if it's inside the block or outside the block. Uh, yeah. You could have the question, if it's about the indentation, how you're doing empty blocks? I think it's not that uh, often coming up, but uh, but you could create an, an empty function if you don't yet want to like explain them what's there or anything like that. Uh, you cannot do that, that you're just putting two spaces there. So, because if you're just reading the code, you don't, you cannot tell if there are two spaces there or not, uh, if the caret is not there. So in this case, it's gonna be a syntax error. The empty block is in, uh, 
explicitly uh, explained like this, you say pass. Pass means that in this line, nothing gonna happen. So that's the way to create an empty block in this case. Um, you can leave the pass here. And actually you can, you can have to really show you that. So let's have a print here. Oh, now we, we are not having it because of that. So as you can see, uh, you can have multiple empty lines uh, if, uh, if you already have something in that block. The only thing that you need, so you cannot have a single empty line for that you are needing to use the pass. So that's the if, uh, the whole setup if you need else and else if is, ifs, uh, how it's looking like in Python. The else part is basically just else uh, with the column, uh, so. Uh, Daesh, there was a question or a Sorry. something from Adina. She yeah. was raising her hand. Yeah, I didn't want to interrupt. I just wanted to ask, right. do I get it correctly that this pass is just um, irrelevant um, at the moment when something is in the if block? It, so exactly. you can just plant it down without any consequences, right? Yeah, yeah, so I could just remove it. Basically pass does nothing else as it would be an empty line. Uh -huh. So it's, it's, it's not really a control structure in a main way. It, it's not even like continue or break or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It basically, Python gonna consider it as an empty line. And can you use pass also just like um, as if you would use switch case or something like that? So. Not, maybe not switch case is the best, best um, um, example, but if in the middle of an if block you use a return or something, is it doing the same in Python? Uh, so it wouldn't end the cycle or the function or anything like that. So you cannot break out mm -hmm. with it. Uh, for that you explicitly, so the break keyword is also existent. Uh -huh. okay. So for that you need to use the break. Pass is really just, Mm -hmm. It will go through on that line without doing anything. Okay, thanks. Oh, really good question about comments. Um, I always forget to tell this. I'm really glad that you asked. Uh, that's hash mark. Uh, so because it, it, the first idea with Python, it was more like, let's have a really high level scripting like language. So it was more, more influenced by, by shell script than than the C type of languages. So that's why the hash mark is the, uh, is the comment. Uh, actually, there, I haven't told you everything about strings. If you wanna have multi-line multi strings, then you can have them. Uh, let's have it here. Let's have a bigger text. For that, you either use three uh, single quotes or C double quotes. And inside the three double quotes, you can have as long string as want as you want. Let's print this one. Uh, let's run it. So as you can see, the whole thing was printed, even these new line characters here and here. Uh, and because of that, Many of the cases, if you want to have multi-line uh, comments, uh, you can see that the people are not doing this, but rather just creating a multi-line string there and creating the comment there because it's just going to be evaluated and it's not added to any, anything. Basically, it's not going to alter the working of the program, but you can basically use it as a, as a comment as well. So. The multi-line comment is more like a misusing of the multi-line string uh, and as a single line comment. Cool. To get back to, to the if, uh, the... Uh, the else if is uh, spelled alif in this case. Uh, 
so it's basically another keyword. It's not not you're writing else space if, but rather altogether elif, and that's where you're able to put the other uh, uh, condition like if equals to zero or something like that. So that's about the if. Uh, yeah, uh, let's let's go to the looping. Uh, you you can have a simple while loop, so it's it, it's gonna work. Let's try it. Let's have b from a zero while b is smaller than four. Oh. Then let's print B and then increment B. Let's talk about this one. You would be tempted to say something like this because of other languages. It's not gonna work in, in Python. So we don't have the operation of plus plus or minus minus, not even like before that. So not, oh, post increment, yeah, it's not, Actually, in this case, it's not posting or pre-increment, pre but rather casting to it uh, to a positive number. So that's why it's running, but it's not the, that's why it's an infinite loop. And I, I'm, I think I'm basically killing my, yeah, so. Uh, so you cannot really do that. The proper way to do it is the plus equals. So basically that's how you increment something in Python. What's really nice, I think also in Python that uh, we don't have the classical for loop. So the, the three, three things in the for loop that are like the uh, posting, uh, like the uh, cycle check and the after the cycle and before the whole for loop and so on. It only has the for loop as the for each that's in most of the languages. So to really show you uh, for loop works this way, that you say for a certain variable like number in and in and any iterable that you can put it here. So like I can say all the numbers in this amazing list. It also ends with a column. Uh, so from then on, you will be able to say print anything there. Let's say the number. Uh, let's run it. So it works with that and it works with any other iterable. So it works with strings as well. Letter in apple. Let's bring the letters. Then it will put all the letters there. So basically any iterable uh, gonna work here. And, and that's the only for loop in this language. So you don't have the classical type of, of for loop. If, if you really need something like a classical type of for loop where you would need to go from a certain number till a certain number, uh, for that we have uh, a really nice function called the range. Let's show you that. I in range uh, and let's print I. And how it works, you just tell the number here. So in this case, it's gonna have a range from zero to nine. So basically it creates an iterable that's, that in the background, uh, Python do have some kind of a mechanism of interfaces and it implements an iterable interface and gets you back all these numbers from uh, zero uh, till 10. What's really nice with it that you can have this notation that you wanna have it from four, four to uh, 10. So basically you can specify two parameters from where to where. And also you can have a last parameter on which steps, so like every second. So basically you can have the same functionality as a C type or C++ or Java type or C sharp type of uh, uh, 
for loop with this range function. And what's really awesome uh, that the same thing works with, uh, with lists and, and not just lists, but also to really show you this, let's have a new variable or just leave by the variable numbers. And let's have a bunch of numbers there. So if I say numbers here, that would, and I could spell, that would be awesome. Uh, then we, we are having all of them there. And as I told you, you're able to get indexes uh, like that, but what's really awesome, you can have ranges from uh, lists as well. So you can say from the second till the sixth, I would like to have all the variables. And basically what it does with the column, it will tell us that let's create a new list from it. So basically you're able to do really easily subsets of, of lists. So that's again, without creating for loops or anything like that, right away you can introduce more complex in, uh, indexing and combining stuff uh, with this one. What's really awesome that it even takes another uh, where you can have this step as well. So in this case, every second. What's even cooler that you can have a negative number there as well. So in, in this case, it's not gonna work because for that you have to say from the sixth till the first, let's go down with every second. Uh, and you can omit any of these. So for example, with this one, you can get from the whole array or list uh, everything as a step like that. So for example, to reverse a, uh, a list is just like that, column, column, and minus one. I think these are really good examples of that, that how verbose Python is. I think I only wanna show you two more things. Uh, one is how functions are working, and the other is what else you're able to do lists uh, or with lists. And, and I think all of these are already something that, that basically with, with these you can do quite a few stuff already. So, so I don't think that uh, for most of these simple games or, or something that you are gonna teach, uh, you would need more. Of course, it's a more in-depth language, so it's totally object-oriented. You can have classes, you can have methods and so on. Uh, but because of we are just having one and a half hours, I'm not going to be able to tell you everything about Python. Uh, and it's also not just the toy language. So really big backends and and uh, and data science related stuff, and actually uh, really deep mathematics related stuff is written in Python. So most of the scientific uh, community is using Python. So in one hand, it's a really nice language to teach, but it's also a really powerful language. And it's also really fast in many of the cases. Uh, so it's used in big data and so on. So don't really think it's just, it's, it's nice because just for kids, <laughs> it's nice because that was a design decision and it's also a really powerful language. Uh, okay, so Let's talk about functions, uh, how you define a function in Python. For that, you need to use the def keyword. Basically that tells that you're gonna define a function. After that, you have to tell the name like greet and then, uh, and then the parentheses and colon again, because a function also has a block there. So we can say print uh, hello plus name, and we can have the name here. So basically now we are able to call this function.
let's call this function. Now it's hello Toyash. Uh, it's, it's not like JavaScript that you can omit it. Let's try it. So it's, uh, I think it's a really nice mixture in Python. It, it's a really nice mixture. It's, it's, it's not that strict as C++ and, and Java and C Sharp and so on, but not that loose as, as JavaScript that you can basically do whatever. So I think it's a nice mixture of, of uh, let you play, but not that much. Uh, and, and I think it's also because of this nature of Python, it's a really nice language to start with. Because for example, when you start with JavaScript, teaching JavaScript to kids, there are so many quirks and, and random things in JavaScript that are, are not really hard to explain and, and, uh, and why would, wouldn't that work and so on. And I think Python is a really nice mixture of, yeah, I'm not gonna over explain this. So, or I, I guess already over, over explained this. So this is how you define uh, functions. You can have uh, quite a few different additional features uh, that I'm just gonna mention now. I'm not gonna go through on everything, uh, but you can have uh, default uh, parameters or optional parameters or variable uh, 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 amount of parameters, even named parameters. Uh, but most of these are not something that you're gonna use with, with the kids. So I'm not gonna go through it. I just wanna mention that it's really a powerful and, and detailed language. And, and I would say the last uh, really Python bit that I wanna show you is uh, there is uh, this idea in Python called the list comprehension. That means you are able to do basically for loop type of things with lists in a different format. Let's check that. Let's say we have these numbers uh, there. So I could say print. Let's have a new uh, list there. And, and how you are uh, doing there you're basically able to recreate, uh, you're basically able to recreate functions or, or sorry, lists with, with a different format from other lists. Uh, to show you this, you can say uh, for every element in, so let's say I in numbers. Uh, and before this whole thing, you can use that I. Let's try this in this case it's gonna print the same thing. But for example, you can say, let's double all the numbers there. So basically as, as you would read it even in, in English that double every i for i in numbers, let's generate a new, uh, a new thing there. Um, so basically if you need some, some type of a mapping where you're changing every element in a string or, or even in a list or any iterable, you can do it right away like that. And it's not just mapping, but filtering as well. On the end, you can even say ifs. Uh, and let's say if i is uh, bigger than three. So in this case, it's gonna skip all of the numbers that are not yet bigger than three. So in a single line, you can have filtering and, and mapping of values. Uh, I'm not that sure that's something that, uh, that's useful to teach the kids right away. Um, um, I think where it, it can be nice and, and, and you, can, you can do stuff with it when, when you are kind of failing uh, set theory in math, because this notation is really close to set theory. Uh, and when you are telling that if we have these numbers and I would change all of them to this and I'm just only including that and so on, you can have almost the same notation uh, with Python as with set theory. So if they are learning something on mass class that you would kind of able to underline with Python, but uh, I wouldn't say that you should start with this one without the for loops and so on, I think still it's, it's better to, to go through in the normal, um, normal 
uh, control structures. Cool. This is what I wanted to show you just with Python or the basic of a language. I think with these tools, you are already able to recreate quite a few algorithms and stuff. Uh, is there any questions so far or comment or anything? Are you sure? Okay, then, no, I can, yeah. I would like to ask something. You said that you are teaching kids too from time to time, is that yes. correct? And um, what are the age range? Uh, yeah, it, it really depends on the workshop or, or on the setup. I think the youngest was, uh, after the fourth grade, and the oldest was 18. Mm -hmm. And how much is it hard for them to understand these, especially these, you know, the exercises that we did at the last moments, because it seems to be a tiny bit complicated for them, or what are your experiences about that? Yeah, so I just wanted to show you some additional Python features. I wouldn't say that it makes sense to introduce uh, this list comprehension thing or even the negative thing is and so on. Uh, I also wanted to show you these because in many of the cases what I figured with Python and when I'm teaching kids uh, that they are already able to Google stuff, uh, how to do something with Python. And in many of the cases they find these answers and they are copy pasting it. And if you don't understand what they are doing, <laughs> then it's better that uh, you can see that, so for example, if you would uh, have a exercise like let's, let's do something like there is this string and let's, uh, let's print all the letters uh, backwards. Uh, that's, that's a really nice exercise to really understand quite a few complicated things for them. So for example, the for loop uh, and accessing variables and so on. But, in, but as you can see, uh, and but if you if they are searching uh, for uh, a solution online, right away they could come up with something like this. That and and it's gonna work as well. Uh, and and I wanted to show you these to okay if they are doing this that you should be able to comprehend. But yeah, definitely I wouldn't I, I wouldn't go uh deliberately into details like these uh so yeah did i answer the question yeah thank you very much awesome any any other cool then then let's check the uh, functionalities of, of this platform from the point of view that uh, what we are able to print uh, on the screen. And, and I'm, now I'm pretty sure that we're not gonna have time for really creating the game, but at least I'm gonna show you uh, what are the functionalities that, that are useful for drawing and, and doing stuff. What, what's really awesome that there are two built-in functions or, or functionalities in this uh, setup that you can use. And all of these are something that even you can use in, in real environments as well. So all these libraries are, are something that you can, you can use in, in a real environment as well. Oh, there you need to install it here right away you can use it. Um, so let's create a new, new trinket. And uh, let's start with the turtle. Uh, you can use modules in Python or other, other rivalries in a way that you just say import. 
and the name of the uh, library. There is a turtle library in Python. Basically, this, this is the logo uh, functionality of Python. So basically, you are able to recreate logo uh, uh, type of things. Uh, for that, what you need is uh, two things. Uh, you need to create a, a screen that you're gonna uh, draw on and also the turtle that's gonna draw. How you are doing this? So to create the, the screen, you have to say turtle uh, dot screen and, and that basically uh, gonna create a screen for you and you can create your turtle I'm just saying turtle, turtle, uh, da, 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 turtle. Uh, if I could spell that would be awesome, turtle. Uh, after that, on these, the T is going to be an object uh, and, and right away, basically you, you will be able to do stuff with it. You can specify quite a few things. Uh, for first, you can specify the starting uh, position. For that, you have to use the set pause uh, method on it. Uh, let's put it somewhere in the middle first and let's try it. Uh, and also uh, uh, try it right away. Let's try it bit forward. And as in logo, you have to specify the. Yeah, yeah, this is not how you spell turtle. More like it. Uh, yeah, so it uh, works right away. You can use all the basic comments like right uh, 90 angles forward again uh, you can have it without the position so as you can see we moved because of the position so basically without with just this boilerplate and, and I'm not sure that it's gonna work without the screen. Let's try it. No, yes, without the screen even. So basically with that much boilerplate, you already have a common use logo type of thing where you're really able to draw stuff. Uh, and, and I think that helps a lot. Um, so, to make it fun right away, what else you're able to do? Uh, you, can, you can set the color of it. Let's try it to red. It, it works like that right away. Uh, also, you can set the pen size. So as you can see now, it already uh, creates bigger things. And also you can set the speed. So in this case, it's slower. Uh, I don't know exactly what's the default speed. I guess it's somewhere, no, so it's five. Yeah, I don't know exactly, but you can have it slower and you can have it faster. And I think uh, like right away you can, you can have really something that that's colorful and more uh, more fun than just doing variables or anything like that. Can you set 2.2, .2, for example, for the speed? Uh, let's try it. Thanks. Seems like. <laughs> uh, so right away you can you can do stuff with it. It also supports filling. Uh, 
But for that, you need a certain uh, functionality. Uh, you can feel stuff by saying you are beginning a feeling by this and you're ending a feeling by this and and whatever you do uh, between that so let's try it like uh, I don't know forward grid and right and it's not how you spell it and let's run this four times uh, I mean four times and it fills it. You can also uh, set a different filling color. For that, you have to say t dot fill color. And let's set something else. Uh, and also you have to spell it well. And let's have it a bit faster to not wait for it. Yeah. You can do the same thing. So basically with this, you can almost already do all the basic stuff that you can do with logo. I would say the additional thing is the uh, pen up and pen down. So for example, I could do these with pen up, t dot pen up and t, t dot pen down. Adina, unmuted yourself. You... Yes, I just wanted to mention that I exactly wanted to ask whether pen up and pen down exists here because if I remember well from my childhood uh, in Comenius logo, you could do that as well, and that yes. was so useful. Yeah, and I think what's really nice with this that you have the functionality of logo, uh, but also you are doing it with a with a real language, uh, so you're helping them to get them used to, to something real. So if you are introducing the for loop here, the while loop here, the if here and so on, they, they can use the exact same syntax uh, for that in, in later when you are really doing something with numbers and so on. So I think you can have the both good ends from, from logo and the real language with, with this. The only additional boilerplate for that, that you just really have to tell them to, to uh, basically accept is, is this one and also the T dot. Uh, usually how I explain this T dot or, or basic object orientation is to say the dot means belongs to. So we are creating the, the turtle and the to the turtle belongs the color, to the turtle belongs the pen size, the turtle belongs the pen up and so on. Even you can make it shorter in a way uh, to say, you can say uh, from turtle, uh, import capital turtle, in this case, you don't need this part. So to make this part a bit longer, you can, you can spare stuff here. And, and it's again, maybe it's not that confusing that you are telling turtle.turtle and why a turtle belongs to another. Uh, and yeah, in this case, you can reuse the turtle variable here and so on. Any other question, comment, idea? I don't really use this programming thing, but I'm curious whether we can start this turtle thing, not from the center of the page, but somewhere else. Can you position somewhere else on the picture? Yes, uh, for that, 
uh, for that you, you need to use this uh, uh, the, the, the set pos. So for example, uh, we can have it from, from the 100, 100. So the whole thing should transition there. If you, if you wanna have it without uh, doing anything in the beginning, then unfortunately you have to do the pen up and pen down. So pen up position in the beginning and pen down there. So it, in a way it always starts in the, in the middle, but with the pen up and pen down, you can do it. So I think it's a really nice tool for, for introducing drawing and introducing programming in a way that, that you can you have this step-by-step -step thing like, okay, uh, forward and right and so on. And okay, how would you do with these really simple instructions uh, do something? Uh, but I think that's not the only way. So I think it's really, really nice for really young children to, to have these really limited vocabulary and based on that inst instructions, okay, the turtle does something. Uh, but there is another library called processing. Uh, if you search for uh, processing and Python, you will get this processing Py library, but also you can say py.processing.org. And, and here you can check the whole reference. And what's really awesome with processing that it's a really in-depth library. Uh, basically with this one, you can, you can even create high level games in one hand. So it's, it's really powerful. But the other hand, to really create something that right away works, it's really easy with Trinket. So with, with not that much boilerplate, you can, you can create games. So let's, let's check that and let's create a new project for it. So I will save this one and I will create a new Trinket. Uh, cool. So I'm just searching for my notes. Cool. Um, for that, what you will need to use for that, you can import processing to use all these functionalities and not always not to tell processing dot something and not to have all the lists here. Uh, the easiest way is to say from processing uh, import star. Star means everything in this case. Um, or asterisk, not star. So processing actually is also a, a programming language. So you can search for processing as a programming language. It's, it's a visual programming language for data visualization in one hand, and it's also for teaching. Uh, but I would recommend to use this with Python because with that, they really learning something that's a broader thing and, and they can, so it's not just for data visualization, but rather through this, they are learning a real programming language. Uh, what's the setup there and what do you need for really create the game? Uh, there are certain functions that you have to predefine. Uh, uh, to, to set up the whole thing. And in the other hand, uh, you have to call some functions to really make it work. So you show you all the necessary setup. Uh, one is the setup function. That's something that you need to define. And that's something that's gonna, runs, uh, gonna run on the really beginning of the whole program. Here, what you can say with the size function, you can basically create the canvas uh, that's gonna be the place where we're gonna draw anything. Uh, what else is there? There is another function, the draw function. Uh, the draw function is going to be called in any frame, every frame. So we don't have to do anything to set up how we're gonna do the frame rates or anything like that. 
it's right away there is the something the callback that's going to call in in uh, every time uh, where you are doing something. Uh, there there are functionalities. One is background, uh, or actually you can use this wherever. Uh, but background is filling the whole background with a sin single color. Uh, you can use the RBG numbers here. So for example, this is going to be black. Let's, let's check this. And the last thing that you need to do to able to run it is call the run function on the end. Let's try this. And also don't leave the G. So you have the background. What's really nice, if you have the same numbers, then you can have a single number here. So for example, to paint it white, this is how you paint it white. What's important that now you have to stop the program because with run, it will create an event loop that goes through in the program all the time. So, so you always have to stop it now. To draw anything on the screen, the easiest that's really uh, cool is the rect function. Basically, it's uh, gonna create uh, a rectangle. First two is the position coordinates. So to the 50-50, I would like to have 100 and 100 rectangle. And it will create the rectangle right away. Uh, you can... Uh, you can set the colors, uh, and uh, but I'm not going to go through on each of the functionalities. Uh, as you can see, you can do rectangle and line and arc and circle and so on. And there are quite a few stuff for uh, filling and coloring and so on. Um, I would rather show you more functionality uh, and uh, from from the game logic. If you want to do uh, anything with, with keyboard input. Uh, for that, there is a predefined function that you can create the key pressed. Uh, and inside that, let's print the key variable. Let's try it. You have to click inside this thing to, to capture your keyboard, but from then on, Oh, I missed that why that's why it didn't work. Yeah. So now if I hit anything on the keyboard, then it's captured. So the key variable is basically that that character. And it's also really nice. It's not a character code. So you don't have to explain that why the A is the 60 something or anything like that. So for example, if you want to check if the key is really the A, then it's just like that. that uh, sorry. So now it's false, but if I say A, then it's true. I think it also helps that, yeah, you don't have to explain the uh, key code. What's important, when, if you define any variable outside Python, so for example, if you would like to create a bigger game where you have a ball or something like that, and you are storing some coordinates for the ball and I have the X variable here. If you wanna use that inside these functions, unfortunately, if you could say something like this in Python, that's gonna create a new local variable to this function. So that this X is not this X. Uh, so for that, you explicitly have to tell Python that this X inside this function is the global variable. So for that, you have to use this. And if you have multiple variables, then you have to uh, separate them with a comma. So basically with this setup, you can already imagine that you can create games by storing the data outside and drawing the stuff here and doing the uh, user interaction here. Uh, and in, in that way, uh, Basically, with with really short code to to really show you, I'm gonna copy paste a smaller chunk of code here. So with that much code, uh, you can you can have a pong game. 
uh, that works right away. So, and, and, and it doesn't use anything more than ifs. So, so it's really something that, that you, can, you can use right away. And it's really awesome. What's re oh, really awesome also, that if you save it, you can share it and you can send it as a link. So if they create something, you can share it as a link, you can send it as an email and so on. So they, it's really something that they can take home and continue and so on and, and share to each other. So it, it also has this kind of functionality as, as, uh, as Scratch has, but in this case, it's more, more of a link, real language. The very last thing I wanted to show is you are able to do images as well. So if you have a certain image, uh, let's have a dino or whatever from the internet. This looks cool. Uh, save this image as dino.jpg. Uh, if you have that image, then you are able to add images to your image library here. Oh, I already have some, so I'm not gonna not gonna upload it now. But you can imagine that you can upload new images here. Uh, basically, I recreated the the Chrome Dino game with uh, with these images. If you upload it, then you can use images as well. Uh, how to use them? Uh, for that, I think I'm gonna copy paste again, how big of a code you need for, for another game. Oh, it's not, never mind. Then I'm just gonna show you the, how to draw a dinosaur, dinosaur without all of these other things. We don't even the, need the all the others. So I hope I will have the dino. Let's try it now. Oh no. But I do have it in my image library. Come on. Never mind then. Let's upload our new image here. Uh, where is the D? Let's try to re upload it, maybe. It will help. Does it matter if it's JPEG or PNG? No, oh, but I said it's PNG. Yeah. Mm. Uh, let's comment this out. Let's try to run it again. Yeah, I have it. So basically, you just upload the image, and right away you can use it to say load image. And with the image function, the loaded image goes here and the coordinates are going here. An additional nice thing that you can use, the exit function exits the whole Python process and finishes anything. So it's a nice way to end the game if you worried about infinite loop and, and starting over anything like that. That also for, for this, you don't have, so yeah, exit is a, is a nice tool for you to end the game. Uh, in Hungarian, with school, we created uh, a video series where I recreate this exact game. So you can you can also use that. It's on YouTube. And and actually, we even have the links there where you can get the code or anything like that. Any other? question, comment, anything. Basically, this, this was it what I wanted to show you. So this means that you're throwing to me your ball, Toyash? Yep. OK, thank you. Super. Okay, you can give the comments and give the feedbacks to Toyash about this um, presentation game. In fact, I am super, super uh, yeah, I didn't like it. 
Uh, and um, okay, let's tell him how useful was it. Okay, in the scale of ten, you can put it in the chat. Uh, the one is that yeah, no, it's not useful at all. It was boring, and ah, uh, yeah, I did anything else but uh, paying attention. And the 10 is like, okay, I already have several things to use and implement into my daily activities. Okay, Tomasz has 10 plus. Wow, Oshoya 10. Okay. Uh, can you name one of them? Why? Which? Why, why is this the 10 and 10 plus? It's interesting. It's. Hmm? Can you speak up, please? Why? What does this 10 mean? Yeah, come on, it's not that hard. Or just write down, whatever. For me, it is. It was everything new information. I learned a lot. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> okay, Oshaya, maybe you. You had questions. Meanwhile, well. I had some pre-knowledge about this programming language and uh, I know it just looks extremely exciting. I'm very satisfied with the presentation as well. And well, you know, the point for me was to get here, get some ideas and solutions, different perspectives, because you know, definitely there is always at least one person who knows it better than you. So you can always learn from it. So it was useful for me. Thank you. So you meet your goals. Yes. <laughs> Ooh, good to hear it. And Anina has some comment uh, that I knew Python basics so far, but very happy to see my chat with Chrome logo coming back. I like this last part can be an alternative to Scratch and so with real programming language. Yeah, I think it's a really good comment. And, and that's why I wanted to show you this, that basically it has the same kind of functionality as Scratch, but you can do a real programming language and not like a not just like a com logo like uh, setup, but it's really a powerful real language. And, and in my experience, so I think Scratch is nice, but I don't think that, that that's a necessary step. So I, I had really good experience to start with right away with code. I think it's not that bad. Uh, yeah, but it, it, in many of the cases, it depends on the group. So I'm not saying that all the time start with it. But, but at least you have another tool in your tool set to, it's not just Scratch, but with the same functionality, you can do it with code as well. Yeah, thank you for this. Uh, actually, I can also speak up, why not? So during uh, this last part, I was wondering, okay, but this is, especially with this, with this game that you showed, it's quite similar to what you can put together in Scratch. And then I came to the conclusion, yeah, but this is really what you, mentioned also earlier that here the children can learn how to like go through a list um, with the normal Python code that is just the same as if uh, they write something more serious. Yeah. So maybe the difference between the two can be the age of the children or this uh, nice colorful things that they can drag and drop compared to the, the characters exactly. that they write. Um, Maybe also this um, fits rather to children who already have some kind of self-confidence in uh, writing code. I mean, like, yes, I am able to do so. And when I am writing characters in the definite order, then the, the game will pop up. So, for example, I'm working with underprivileged children. And for them, it's also uh, um, first order, the zeroes point to give them the self-confidence. And maybe that is a good thing to do with this exactly. stretch first. Yeah, so I'm not saying Scratch is bad, uh, mm -hmm. and I'm not. I think it's one of the best tools to to be at self confidence and, and also uh, gain uh, interest. So like, oh, that's mm -hmm. something that I would like to do, and so on. Um, uh, uh, what I wanted to say that so far I was always afraid to to on the really beginning to show them uh, real code, but mm -hmm. every time I did so. I was positively uh, like, so I never thought I never thought that it's gonna work that that well. Mm -hmm. so I was always positively surprised uh, how it's hard to do the same thing with text as with the block programming, and they are still excited and so on. Mm 